My tourniquets, why is it all Pringles? Oh god. Come here. I need a drug drop medical kit. On my position. I'm underneath the bridge. I need it quick. Copy that tactical tip. We are inbound to your position. So we have the bridge coming up in our view right now, searching for the target. I believe we have located the target. We have a positive confirmation of target on the thermal. Looking forward, zoom. And that is indeed Tactical Tim. We will be deploying your gear shortly. Tactical Tim, be advised you have power lines to your position. We're going to have to drop a little ways away from you. Come safe for the wind and release. Shoot warning, warning, warning. Shoot warning. Shoot warning. That was close. Tactical Tim, your package is on its way. Drones have been used to drop all sorts of munitions over the last couple of years, mainly in the Russo-Ukrainian war. And like all conflicts, it's led to serious advances in technology. So I got the idea of watching all of the horror taking place overseas and thought, what can we do to use this budding technology for good? So several months ago, I reached out and asked for the community's help on designing a drone dropped medical parachute kit for delivering supplies in otherwise inaccessible places. Don't worry, I'll pick this up later. And over the last couple of months, we got a working prototype design. We have a medical kit or just a general gear bag that can hold approximately two pounds of gear and can be dropped by a drone with a parachute that will open up and inflate as it drops. So without further ado, I'm happy to announce the Vandershoot. I've named it the Vandershoot because A, that's easier to say than drone dropped medical kit with a parachute attached to it. And also after the man who helped me design it. It consists of very hastily strung together equipment that works. This is not by any means a perfect design. This is just a prototype of sorts that we actually got working 99% of the time. How does it work? As you can see by our fantastic engineering department, we have a zip tie on top of the cargo with a clip on top. Like I said, definitely not the final form. This portion right here attaches to the under part of the drone, the sky hook, let's call it, and holds on and swings like this. Now, generally, drone drop munitions or any sort of cargo, you drop it and it's going to just fall like that, which is great if you want to get something to someone in a hurry. What if you make sure you don't want to hurt whoever is on the ground or you don't want to break the contents in there? Say you're trying to drop water bottles or glass medication jar, or I don't know why you'd carry your medicine in a glass jar, but regardless, you want to carry something that will float to the ground and not be harmed and not harm anyone underneath them. Another reason you might want to parachute is you can't descend due to your radio communication with the controller is getting a little too off. You can't uh, descend through trees. You can't fill in the blank reasons of why you can't descend to a safe altitude. 
This right here all put together is probably around three pounds. Reaching terminal velocity, it's gonna hurt someone. We don't wanna hurt someone, especially if we're trying to resupply them with gear they may need. So we need some way of slowing it down before it gets to the ground. That's where the parachute comes in. So this hook attaches to the underside of the sky hook. And then in here, this is folded up all wrong. Stand by. There we go. So this portion clips to the underside of the drone from the skyhook apparatus. And this is a little breakaway bead attached to a bit of string on top of the parachute itself, which is also held on by zip ties. What do you want from me? I enlisted to avoid going to college. This bead attaches to, this is a female end. This attaches to a male end bead on the skyhook apparatus. When this is released, from the sky hook this drops and stays connected to the static line going to the sky hook and pulls the shoot out <gasps> once the shoot is dropped this remains attached to the sky hook and will fall and it will pull out the shoot as it drops and then once it reaches the end and all of the weight is on that bead this will break apart very reusable will break apart the shoot will drop and the parachute itself will inflate. So far, I have not had all of that many issues with this system. It's still held together by zip ties and has O-rings that are prone to fail, but it's a working system that I'm hoping to revamp quickly, especially with your guys' input. I'll give you an idea of what's inside here. We have a SAM splint. We have matches, waterproof matches and compass. We have emergency medical bandages. We have glow sticks to help someone find, be found at night. We have an emergency blanket. We have trauma shears. We have a tourniquet. We have medical tape. We have iodine for decontaminating water and we have gauze packing strips. This is essentially a, an IFAC or individual first aid kit all put together to keep someone alive from any sort of traumatic injury they may have that will take some time for rescuers to get to them or to resupply said rescuers if they get up there in the mountains and they're going, wow, we forgot our tourniquets. Someone replaced all our tourniquets with Pringles. Hey, we really need tourniquets up here really, really quickly but the drone can't descend below 200 feet due to visual line of sight, due to radio signal degradation, due to trees, fill in the blank. Now you can safely drop it to them. The medical bag is a just very common uh, bag you can buy from Amazon or anywhere. It, again, holds about two pounds. You can see about how big it is in my tiny little hands right here. And then on the back is a simple water bottle holder with a mesh bottom that can zip tie up top because the main thing i wanted out of this was to make it not be bulky i wanted everything to fit together nice and snug you can throw this in your backpack throw this in your you know stuck your luggage of your truck and it'll all be self-contained the parachute is attached by strips of nylon the parachute itself is an old umbrella that we repurposed so yeah, it could really use better material. This works great, but we have to sacrifice an entire umbrella to make it work. And I'm not about to learn how to sew in order to make my own. So if anyone has any better ideas for a shoot, again, leave them in the comments. This is DIY at its finest. The shoot folds up nice and simple. You basically get everything all nice and stretched out. Double the string, push it in first, and then just stuff the parachute in. I've tried folding it in different ways, and this just seems to be what works best. You want it to slide out as fast as possible without catching on anything. And I've found that if you fold it over and on top of itself, it tends to catch. This, the center of gravity on this is extremely important, and I still have not dialed it in properly. Um, it tends to pitch forward and catch and pull like this a lot. You'll see that in the videos of it actually in work. It still tends to always fall out, but it scares me every time it fails to deploy. So having it just be stuffed in right at the top like that has what's worked best for us. Shoot is attached by two D-rings or two, um, two O-rings to the back uh, plastic hooks or plastic D-loops on the back of the medical bag. Again, it has a lot of room for improvement. 
Now, one of the big design flaws with this, or not so much a design flaw, it's just the nature of physics, is it tends to float quite a ways. It has no control once it is dropped, which means if it falls and it's, if it's windy day like today, there's a good chance it's gonna blow quite a ways away from the area where you wanna drop it. So if you drop it up in the mountains, there's a good chance it could end up 100, 200 feet away from your drop zone, depending on how high you drop it from. There's a good chance it could end up in trees. That's just the nature of the beast when it comes to using parachutes. If I can find a way to help control it as it goes down, perfect. Ideally, this would be rendered completely obsolete if I could get some sort of real system, which system set up for this whole thing to just lower it to the ground, but I have not seen one of those come out for the Mavic 3 or the M30 yet. So when it does, perfect, I'm gonna switch to that. In the meantime, I don't have the money to drop on a Skycart 30 to carry 80 pounds of gear up into the mountains. That's a little bit overkill for what I'm trying to engineer anyways. This, I wanted to be just part of the kit for when you go out with your search and rescue drone and you need to safely drop something to someone in an emergency. This is a very much emergency use scenario. So let's see it in action. So right here, we have our M30T and we have the BK30 system for dropping cargo. I got it from Firehouse Technologies. I'll leave a link to it in the description. It works by attaching to the underneath of the drone. And there's a little button right here where you press on the underside and it snaps in and it's on there nice and firm. And then you have your PSDK port, which plugs in right here at the top. And then boom, everything on this drone dropping mechanism is controlled by the controller itself. There's no need to uh, flash the auxiliary lights on and off. It just, it just works. Now, forgot one of the most important pieces, the static line. So you can see it's just the male end attached to a loop of string, goes right over the front light bar and cinches down on itself like that. And then you attach it normally. This way, you have a very small piece of string that's dangling beneath the drone that does not have any sort of chance really of getting into the propellers. Don't sue me if yours does by replicating this. So that'll stay on there. and It'll stay more flush when it gets actually on the drone itself. And then you're ready to go. And once that's on, fire it up. So with the BK30 system, sometimes it has a lot of issues where it will not hook up properly to the drone when you first plug it in. That's easily solved by getting the firmware update for it. I updated mine this morning after reaching out to the manufacturer and finding out why I was having so many issues with it. And soon as I updated the firmware, it worked perfectly. So now we're gonna turn the drone on and make sure it shows up on the screen. And you'll see right there, it shows the BK30 is loaded onto the PSDK system, which means we are good to go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get this up in the air. And we're gonna bring it right over here and hook our cargo up to it. My ballistic helmet is at home, but I keep my search and rescue helmet on me. Safety first. So like I said, you'll see me hook up to it. This portion attaches to the sky hook. This portion attaches to the static line. Good to go. All right, so I don't want this to blow too far. So I'm gonna drop it from a hundred feet just to give an idea of how well it works. And drop. And you can see it on the screen. There it goes. Nice soft landing. So yeah, as you can see, 100 feet, it works great. I've tested it all the way up to the max legal limit of 400. Works fantastically. But it's getting a little late in the day. I gotta get home and help out with dinner. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the rest of this video over, at least for now, to past Tim, who did a bunch of tests back last week when it was like 40 degrees because California can't make up its freaking mind if it wants to be winter or summer. It's currently summer right now. It was 40 degrees and pouring rain like a couple days ago. So 
we're gonna move back and check out past Tim's footage. First things first, I wanted to give you guys just a little bit of a closer look on how this whole parachute gets folded. You can see you form the strings into a loop, simply fold the umbrella or parachute in on itself, smooth it out to get it as thin as possible, and just shove it on in there. Just make sure the top of the parachute is unobstructed from the top of the bag and leave the static line string hanging out. Right here you can see how quick and easy it is to attach this whole system. Just make sure you don't get your ears anywhere close to the spinning blades. Or your fingers for that matter. Here you can see that the whole system is remarkably stable even as it hangs on and while it flies. Here's a ground view of the chute opening. This was probably around 300 or so feet and we had a fair amount of wind that day so it happily sailed way out of frame and I had to go running for it. This is a drop from 100 feet showing that the chute is suitable for low altitude openings as well as how much the wind actually affects it. Throughout the entire test I only had one fail to open as seen here. In this clip you can see as the cargo pitches forward, it still deploys a chute, but that's a center of gravity issue that I'm still trying to work out. 9 out of 10 times though, the chute opened perfectly regardless of if it had any hiccups in the drop. It's still not enough for me to say this is a perfectly safe, perfectly built contraption, and I don't recommend it for skydiving. So if you do decide to build one of these, do so at your own risk. It's something that is very much a work in progress. The science is still very much progressing. I'm just really happy with what we were able to create so far. And I trusted it enough that at the end of the day, I decided to go ahead and strap my GoPro to it to see what it would look like from parachuting at 300 feet from a tiny drone. I have no interest in skydiving myself because I've always lived by the motto of why would you jump out of a perfectly good airplane, but through the wonders of technology I can make tiny little cameras go and do the job for me. So if you're motion sick at all, you might not like this next part. Don't worry, I of course dropped the GoPro in a very well protected case. After the whole GoPro experiment, I decided I wanted to test and see just how hard the chutes were coming down by running and catching them on their way down myself. It worked great, except for I underestimated just how much inertia the cargo had, which of course tore apart the cheap O-rings I had holding the parachute together, but that's okay, it's all science. Good job, past Tim. So we've walked out here. That's about how far it drifted. I dropped it just a little bit a ways away from my truck. And we've got probably about a 10, 15 mile an hour wind or so right now. So the wind definitely took it. But hey, it worked. So yeah, it's got a lot of room for improvement. A lot of room for improvement. I am more than happy to hear any sort of suggestions on how to improve this because I would really like to make this be a much more professional thing. I feel like there could be a lot of uses for it in resupplying people way out in the bush, getting life-saving gear, food, water, medicine, trauma gear to people who need it that rescuers can't get to them, at least not for a while, and you can't drop stuff down to them without hurting them otherwise. Um, I think there's a lot of good we could do with this design. But for the meantime, that's the Vandershoot. That's the update. I am tangled up in the Vandershoot. Any ideas on how to improve it? Leave them in the comments. Share it with your friends that are way smarter than I am and get their opinions. Till then, thanks for watching. See you next time.